thank you so much for joining us and uh, you know such bright minds uh, on uh, such a complex issue so while it's all very nice to hear from information to interaction uh, as people who are you know content makers in and you know and very very uh, proficient ones in your own right um, do you think prima facie content and storytelling per se has really taken a dramatic shift from the traditional principles of storytelling or is there too much of a halabaloo around it I, i think storytelling is is exactly the same and throughout history uh, whenever there is a story there has to be somebody who's either telling the story or enacting a story and that is a either a listener or a viewer i think that fundamental is still there um and people do get hooked on to you know good stories uh but yeah so to answer your question so, so your the fundamental is, storytelling is still the same is there anybody on the panel who thinks that there has been a dramatic shift from what we traditionally knew as storytelling to now look there's been no change in storytelling uh, like he said people have been telling stories for centuries i think even uh, i mean mythology uh, we have we we as human beings love stories we gravitate to stories when it comes to particularly like advertising and storytelling like let's talk let's be specific uh, about interaction you're talking about interaction the idea is that look we were not four people control the media literally four white dudes control the media before and it was the television it was the radio and it was outdoor and it was print for instance right and people did not have an opportunity other than potentially writing in letters to people because how many times have we sat in front of a television screen and we had something pop on we had no control over that of what we were watching other than switching the channel and at some point we didn't even have that in this country and then human beings have always expressed their feelings we are people who like to shout at the television are ye kya nikala hai are what is this character doing we always talked to the television uh what we've done now and with this smartphone it's no longer a 13 year old school boy school girl phenomena right this this internet is the single greatest thing to have ever happened to the human race period it's as as simple as that the idea is that people can actually now st- if you're talking to somebody on the internet they're going to have an opinion and they can talk back unless you switch off your comments which is really really bad like don't as a brand one can't afford to do that right so the idea is that now people want to share their opinion and it's as simple it's 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 quite simple okay. i i think um, you know i think for me just the story if you just focus on the story without the platforms and the channels etc mm. um uh, i don't know and somebody might not uh, agree with me on this but i think it's become the stories itself have become a little more complex over the years maybe in decades gone by ages gone by stories were probably simpler i think now we tend to explore sides of human emotions uh that we didn't explore earlier i think now we tend to look okay. at people as multifaceted and i i just want to i i have a rejoinder to what your observation is uh, firstly when you talk about storytelling are we talking are we restricting storytelling right now to just the advertising and promotion world or no. are we even talking I, I about content, content bollywood ads everything, everything. Content, and i think everything. it's, everything. It's, it's, it's a reflection actually, of it's yeah. a reflection of life and reality mm. yeah. people have changed uh, add to what sadat is saying actually if you look at data as well today the structure of consumption uh, especially with data cost going down has started mirroring the structure of consumption in the erstwhile television show movie era right so people are watching shows people are watching movies right the difference is the kind of shows they want to watch and the kind of movies they want to watch but at the time they want to watch right so it's on demand etc right. right so like you were saying there's more exploration on the kind of themes that are actually going around right so that is very evident right you see the originals from any uh, you know ott platform you'll see a lot of different kinds of programming as against what television was dishing out because television was primarily designed to cater to the household and especially the lowest com- common denominator in the household right sure. so that's changed so every household that has one tv has got two two and a half mobile phones so you know programming stroke storytelling catering to the individual is really the big change that has happened having said that the structure of consumption you know earlier on people used to say short formats work in digital blah work etc i think that's all gone people are actually going to good stories investing in characters investing exactly the kind of stuff that was there earlier but with a different idiom so i mean that that's really something that's happening at the broader level of content consumption how that impacts everyone else is a question to be answered right but that's okay. something I'm so we coming to when you say interactive right firstly i think from a sure you know viewer point of view which would be me all of your la creators uh w- 
you know, to, uh, to us, we may not be so involved in, you know, let's say how you all dissect and analyze it. To us, we're just looking at it as sheer content. We want to watch it or not. Uh, so whether it's information or it's interactiveness and the way you label it may not be the way we're labeling it. Uh, so my question is, when you're looking and your prime, your, your, your prime problem today is that there is such a lot of content glut uh, that, you know, we as consumers are faced with that it's a bit difficult to shout out. Even if you make amazing content, for me to unmute that uh, is, also, is, also is also dependent on my mood and my state of mind Absolutely. and et cetera, all of that. Uh, so my question is, today as you know, um, leading content players, what would you say would be your three largest content nightmares while creating it? At, I mean, I don't know about, about uh, the others on the panel, but I mean, when at Scoopu, when we look at creating a piece of content, I think we keep it very simple. We also approach it from the point of view of will I want to watch it, will I want to share it? I think the fundamental drive of creating content, especially in the space that we are in, uh, comes from there. From Flipkart's standpoint, right, Sonali? Yeah, sure. Uh, that because we're not the primary PC content creators, right? We largely, either we're creating our own content through agencies or through the publishers, like here on the panel. I think the challenge that we face normally is because from a brand side, uh, especially from a retail perspective, from our whole job is about letting the proposition out of the market. Whereas the platform's job is about to tell the story out of the market. It is the challenge always has been the right amalgamation or the right, the common denominator for both the parties, for example where I want to talk about my proposition, but users might not want to hear the proposition in the exactly. manner I want to speak to. Exactly. They want to tell a story, but where am I fitting in their world of storytelling? The biggest challenge always has been where the publishers or the content creators, are, rightfully so, uh, treat as a holy grail on the content platform, and the brands on our side trying to get into that world and trying to fit in our proposition from that perspective. So the right mix or the right marriage on both sides has been the biggest challenge so far. So I'll quickly add uh, to something what Kunal is saying. So what we have seen is that, and maybe this can be another point, uh, thread that we can go along. Personally, what I feel is that it's more difficult to integrate brand proposition in fiction content mm. than it is in non-fiction content. Okay, so I have a slightly different learning because the, tr the truth of the matter is when you, when you look at a brand and you look at, you say, what does a brand care about? We're living in a day and age where you have to fight for attention. Like he just spoke about OTT and you know, stories becoming, it's not catering to everybody. If you program sure. for everybody, you program for nobody. I think as a storyteller, the first thing you have to look at is, how do you define this as a great story or not? And why should anybody want to listen to this? Why should anybody or this specific target audience that you're creating for care about this, right? So today a brand is actually has to fundamentally compete with the sacred games or the crown or stranger things or whatever else. Because the truth of the matter is that unless you can capture people's imagination first, uh, people are not going to listen to you, right? So I understand as a marketer where you come from and you say, look, I have this money, I need to spend this money, why should I spend it on fiction? None of my value proposition is coming out, people don't know about my product, people are not going to buy that product. The idea is, is this the best way to capture people's imagination and attention and make them start listening to you? And I think the point of the matter is that Unless you have people's attention, it can't be, and, and coming back to data, the truth of the matter is even with Netflix and guys like Reed Hastings talk about this, he said, look, as much as people think we're a data-led company and we have a kick-ass insight that comes in from that insight, we go on to make spectacular content, that is not the case. The truth of the matter is that storytelling is still very much instinct-based. And the truth of the matter is that there are two fundamentals of storytelling. Is there great intent? And is there en enough conflict or obstacles in that story? And does our character, protagonist, or our group of people actually make it past that obstacle? And whether they make it, it's not important. If it's engaging enough, the obstacle should be formidable. So I think it's about telling great stories. And, that, and it's about competing with the best to tell those stories. You can also think of uh, two things that are different about this era, right? One is obviously uh, the fact that you get time spent uh, data, right? So for us, for example, when you use the word interactivity or interaction, I think the best uh, you know, kind of metric that you can ever have is time spent on the show, right? Whether you're completing. That yeah. yeah. So that's a very, very important uh, return path data, which we never used to have in the Bollywood era, in the television era, but it's there in the digital era, right? So that's something which is helping a lot of us you know, kind of try and see what kind of themes work, what kind of themes resonate. See, the other other bit is like fairly organic you know you can you can continue to work with many sorts of uh, themes etc but 
Finally, it's about whether or not what you've put out, okay, appeals to a certain segment that you've put out. And this, this second part, which is whether or not it's relevant or not, is also being uh, treated by the likes of Hotstar and Netflix and others and Facebook and all by machine learning. So because of recommendation engines, because of, uh, you know, kind of um, related content discovery, you are less likely to find stuff that is completely irrelevant mm. in this day and age as compared to the earlier, you know, era. So, and can I, so yeah. both these things have an advantageous thing for the kind of, so you, while you can go wrong in any era in, in making content, yeah. there is a little better sort of feedback mechanism which is more genuine than just like, you know, television ratings mm. that are there at play. Two questions really. One is when what I'm getting from this panel, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that essentially the fundamentals of storytelling have remained the same. Your real problem is the fact that you need to be heard and, and listened to. So, really, engagement with your potential viewer seems to be the issue. Uh, so, given that, in this scheme of things, what really uh, you know, coming from a very, very basic standpoint, does interactive storytelling even mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm questioning I, I'm, that. I, I, I think it's a very, very overhyped word. <laughs> and I mean, I'll be yeah. honest. So if I have uh, to like but diss it, the topic. There are, yeah, there, are, yeah. there are segments in which this actually works much better. Like sports is also programming. There is probably a lot of work on the sports side and the gaming side, which is really true interaction. But otherwise for us, uh, since we're original content creators and we work a lot of, look, a lot of platforms as well as our own platform, we look at time spent as our big data point for interaction. So if the viewer is actually completing, time spent means also completion rate of a show, et cetera, and the, fa and the ability to go to the next episode and if it's a series, et cetera. So that data is our holy grail for interaction and interactivity. I mean, I don't know about is, the others. Is but there a contrary? I, I don't think interaction is, interactivity is not really new in that sense because if you look at at least sports broadcasting for a while, right? Mm. They've been asking people, Twitter poll, this poll, that poll, who do you think, opinion. Right. But that, that's such a basic form. So it's in, a very basic In my format. mind, if I'm really talking about interactive storytelling, as a, as a consumer standpoint, I would think that, okay, today content creators are giving me the option to choose my own plot line, right? So you take me to a certain point and then tell me, you decide A, B, C, D, and I choose my own story path. So I'm interacting and creating the story along with the fixed guidelines that you have provided me. So that, in my opinion, would be, yeah, okay, that's level 2.0 of, story, Actually, that's, of, that's of true interactive of storytelling. Uh, today's gaming is all open world, right? Gaming, so you create gaming your yes. Character. Gaming, yes. But if I look at, you know, yeah, gaming broad, sports is the only, only yeah, broad is, you know, content yeah. industries, which may be that of advertising or, or content or broadcasting, it's still pretty linear. Again, it's been, it's actually been tried many times. Uh, TV channels have tried it five, six years ago. In fact, and OTD is trying it now, etc. In fact, there was a uh, uh, Stephen Soderbergh show a little while back called Mosaic. Um, it's an HBO show, which on the app, you had the option to choose between many endings. On TV, it went with a linear ending, etc. But uh, till now, and I don't know if it's a limitation of the way it's been done or thought or whatever it is, till now, the one that's, that often is liked by people, the one that's the most engaging is the linear one. One, one obviously missing th uh, thing that we, we didn't talk about as much is that today's audiences themselves are actually becoming ambassadors for a lot of our content, right? So that, I think, is an interesting new yes. thing that has happened. And that's really, I mean, for example, uh, we have a franchise called Aisha, which is actually a very niche kind of thing because it appeals to a slightly, you know, tech kind of AI kind of crowd. But it's got a three, three and a half million following. And every season, whenever we do it, I mean, there is a there is a hush in the whole thing. We don't even announce anything, but that whole three, three and a half million audience, you know, kind of talks about it and gets to it, right? So I'm sure there are lots of examples where communities of people actually affiliated with certain content multiply that. I mean, that's really another probably example of interactivity leading to something. Sure. No, also is key key challenge a yeah, go ahead. A, a key key yeah, challenge yeah, or yeah, yeah, an yeah. ice bucket challenge is interactivity, you know, the peak of interactivity, Absolutely. right? Where you Absolutely. come across a piece of story or something that moves you and you take the effort to not only be a part of that, but, you know, create a video, share it, et cetera, et cetera, and then... Absolutely. And uh, coming back to this whole interactive, like you said, you can choose your plot lines, yeah. you can actually do stuff, you can, you as an audience member feel like you're part of this exactly. journey yeah. and you can actually influence this journey. Uh, I think that 
uh, the idea is that, look, uh, we as human beings today, there will come a point where we don't need to really go out and watch cinema in a theater and buy a ticket. Uh, buy a ticket to watch that. You can, we love experiential formats. We like to participate, which is what coming back to gaming and stuff like that. Like, we as human beings like to feel like we matter. It comes back to us being, like, that's the reason why anything, any of why in Instagram works, because we believe that we can have our own audiences, we can have our own degree of influence. And as a brand, like it's, or as anybody producing stories, if you can somehow potentially through linear, because linear does work fantastically well, involve the audience where they can experientially feel like they were part of this journey somehow, that would be interactive. But again, like he said, it's just another format. I want to talk about one particular trend. For instance, if you just flash back a few years ago when, you know, we hadn't hit as much as we have today in terms of the, the, the social media phenomenon we are seeing. And you have, and it was just about coming about. We had, uh, you know, single pieces of content. Doesn't matter from which part of the world, but travel universally and very quickly. Cases in point being, uh, Kola Veridi, uh, what's the other Gagnam, Gagnam style, right? These were pieces of that were released and traveled the world, you know, in unstoppable time. These were also the times when there were no walls between social media per se. So it wasn't like you know. Uh, if I put a, a, a Facebook link on Twitter, that it won't travel because Twitter and Facebook are competing. So these were also much more open and hence, I think, more not such nuanced days. Today in a day where everybody is competing with everybody uh, and everybody is a content maker and everybody is looking at a content and a video thrust, how do you look at whatever you may be interactive, you may be, you know, the next best thing after, you know, uh, I don't know who name any famous director. The point is, how is it going to be visible when your shareability is, is going to be highly compromised depending on, you know, your affiliations, which platform you rest on and your competitive advantage? This whole thing, this whole thing spawned at a time when I think there was dearth of a quality kind of content exactly. for a certain section of the audience. And so there was a, people were being driven there because that was the only different thing you could get from what was available on TV. That isn't the case anymore with people like Ari and hosts of other creators coming out and producing a lot of quality content, also getting more uh, 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 conscious about how to monetize it, being more careful about how to monetize it. It's, it's driving that whole mindless, low quality uh, consumption and the yields on it to even lower uh, uh, levels than it is at right now. But then, Siddharth, what you're saying is that, uh, you know, high quality content is then yielding, uh, you know, unimaginable uh, amounts of, uh, uh, you know, likes and shares and, and attention. And, and, and that's not true either. I don't say that because um, the point is. Uh, so some of the social generation media giants of, are yeah, still giants, yeah. right? Uh, there is a disservice yeah. being done to a whole generation of UGC guys now who are coming into the system because of these walls that have actually come in, right? That's one. Yeah. And two, because of monetization problems also. And monetization, and, uh, monetization is not just views. Monetization depends on engagement, which is a critical factor. Sure. Engagements are driven by good stories. And therefore, it's going to be a, a, I'm not, see, they're still, they're such big giants right now. Nothing's going to die down in like a year or mm. two years. But it's not seeing the kind of yields it used to. Look, I think we're also, fact. I completely agree with what you're saying. It's about also the, look, uh, the, the early movers to a new platform always have an early advantage. They can experiment, they can try and come up with content, they can capture people's imagination at the start of it. But the truth of the matter is that today it's just like now with the rise of Geo, with people having smartphones that have been democratized and anybody can produce and your anybody with a smartphone can come with great content and actually disrupt the game. The truth of the matter is not, not every creator is looking at monetization as the start of it, right? It's also about having a certain degree of influence. That's right. The idea is that if you can build that influence, if you can, if you are not getting crazy amount of engagement and if you think that, okay, fine, I advertise, I targeted my content to certain people, first you need to know how to use your targeting and get to the people that you think matter to you and then start to talk to them specifically. Uh, and then you start to build your influence. Then as, as a monetization strategy, it can move secondary to, to other things. No, right? I think, I think her platform. point was basically that has the phenomenon shrunk in some, yeah, the discovery phenomenon from a, I mean, there are, are there phenomena anymore, right? Or will there be phenomena on, on UGC anymore? 
My sense is yes, but I think they are getting constrained by the walls that she's talking I about agree. that is there. Yeah. And also the fact that, you know, what is the end game in this, right? Whether if you're not able to sustain yourself yeah. for a long time on these platforms. You what, have what, to shut down at some point, right? So the yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. India is a low ARPU market. Yes, I mean, if the exactly. Kardashians were in India, plus they, don't they would pay, still be a hundred million They, don't, million they plus will not want to pay exactly. for a long time. They wouldn't yeah. be earning as much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's well put. Like, so I just want to get in, uh, you know, the brand view here. So Kunal, as a person who has to do, deal with so much of, uh, you know, content glut to get, ensure that your voice is heard, uh, it must be a really frustrating time to be a CMO in today's day and age. Uh, what, what would you say are your learnings about, you know, some of the campaigns that you've put out where you found, uh, you know, alarming amount of surprise because it just wasn't as expected, either good or bad, depending on what's in vogue. So I think what has really transpired, uh, Sonali, is uh, earlier when uh, it all used to be about selling the commodity out there in the market, talking about, for example, if there's a car, you'll talk about the sleekness or the power or the engine and all that. I think users don't care about that anymore. Unless and until you talk about what they want to hear, if you don't put out your brand purpose out there, the users don't really care about it. So actually, what from our side, what we have been trying to do also, trying to change ourselves with these times as well, uh, trying to lay out, for example, why do we fit in their world? So we have to define ourselves, keeping the world in mind first, and then straight out our brand purpose very clearly, which is not about us first, which is about how are we fitting in the user's world first. For example, if, and basis that, we have started creating our stories. A very good example, for example, if a proposition that we have to talk about in the market, which, um, for example, like we have a product called buy now, pay later, as the same yeah, as that, right? Yeah. You can keep buying and keep paying later. It's come up from a philosophy of khata system in India. If I have to just go and talk about this proposition, user won't care about it. Unless and until I talk, just uh, tell the story about why they in India specifically this used to happen, where is it originated from, how the users have been using it, and hence the brand has come up with this. If I don't tell that story and just talk about my proposition, it won't sell enough. Really? That is, I mean, that is what we are also learning. I mean, because if you have to tell the story out there, we have to fit in the brand's world. There is no digital strategy anymore. Let me tell you where I'm coming from. Right? Today, almost every brand, and mark my words on social media specifically, every brand, because they have the liberty of time, and because they don't have to prove that they are good Samaritans in yeah. society, almost every brand looks like an NGO. Absolutely. Every brand is like doing, saving the world. Sometimes you wonder, then, who is destroying it? because everybody is saving the world. So in a, in a time like that, uh, when everybody is trying to position themselves as the best thing that happened to planet Earth, uh, we're, not, we're not fools either, mm -hmm. right? So we can see through it as well. So I'm saying, is there, is there merit when you, when you think about the fact that maybe, just maybe, simple straight messaging can also work? Just a thought. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. So I'm not saying we have to completely done away with that, Sonali, no, at no, all. No, it's not about you. It's no, no, I'm, saying in, you I'm market, saying in general. I'm saying in general. When I say we, I'm talking on the brand side right now. Oh, okay. So the six second thing still works, right? If you look at your hundred, if you have to hundred dollars to spend in the market, your seventy, eighty dollar will still be about your six second straight communication direct about it. But I think if the brands are also trying to come across as somebody who was out there to save the planet, I think it's a good thing, at least. The brands are also putting the efforts to be a part of some storytelling and to be a part of the universe. As long as it's authentic, in the sense that you're actually doing it. Each I brand mean, just stating, own, you know, just stating that say, yeah, each brand has own I mean. path on that matter, right? But I think uh, the reality of the life is, uh, if you have $100 to spend, 70, 80 percent of that is still about straight messaging. It's still about trying to get to the attention span of that, trying to get a proposition out. But guess what? Oh, beyond that also, if you keep doing that, you'll be just seen as one person. If 100, 100 people in this room and are all different all that, if I have the same strategy for everybody, it ain't going to work for anybody, right? So Especially on a, on, on a platform like uh, digital. It can work on TV and print and the offline world, but on digital, absolutely. what Kunal is saying, you, you have, a brand has to do that. You, you have to appear dynamic and human and authentic. Well, on that note, uh, gentlemen, I'll have to wrap up. But uh, thank you so much for the illuminating thoughts. I hope the audience is uh, you know, taking back uh, some... Uh, serious takeaways from this very elite panel and uh, all the best for the tough days ahead. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so I'm much.